sign of the post-war times is the reopening in Toronto of the world's biggest annual fair, the Canadian National Exhibition. Owned and developed by the people of Toronto, it's become a giant international fair, music festival and sports rally, all rolled into one. And this year, thousands of eager children are looking forward to seeing the wonders of the X for the first time, like Johnny. Now, for the first time since 1941, Canadians are heading for the big park on the lakefront for all the fun of the fair and a glimpse of the new horizons of Canadian enterprise. In the 97 buildings, there's plenty to see. Dog shows, cat shows, electric typewriters, television receivers, plastic bathroom sinks, rear-engined automobiles, streamlined tractors, fireproof ironing boards, jet-propelled aircraft, and famous military bands. Over a thousand major exhibits, and of course, the Midway, complete with sword swallowers and bearded ladies. Despite tired feet, everyone is having a great time, and it's hard to decide where to go next. Did we say everyone? Well, not exactly. Johnny has been seeing only what mom and pop want to see, and as a matter of fact, he's bored. Especially a kid like Johnny, who's got a lot of curiosity. You know, the explorer type. At first, they don't miss him. Then... Where's Johnny? Where did that boy go? With 250,000 people here, that kid... thinks Johnny this is more like it why there's bound to be more to this exhibition than flower shows and fashion parades so with three nickels in his pocket and a whole day ahead of him Johnny puts his best foot forward he's not sure where he's going but he's on his way as well as in communication and in transport by sea land and air I have now the honor mr. president to invite the people of Canada and visitors from other lands to view the Canadian National Exhibition. And to that end, I now declare the exhibition to be open. It's Prime Minister Mackenzie King officially opening the exhibition. Johnny sticks around and has a few words with the PM on important matters of state. Meanwhile, Johnny's mother is trying to think of the likeliest place to find her missing son. Little does she dream that he's with the Prime Minister and having the time of his life. Johnny reckons you never learn about life unless you get out and see for yourself. And for his first time at the X, he's doing all right. Now it's turned into one of those days when anything can happen. Like a true son of the 20th century, he takes everything in his stride. In the General Exhibits building, he finds a crowd of people watching strange things going on inside a tumbler. From petroleum gases with the aid of coal, salt, soap, water, and a dash of this and that, he sees rubber being made before his very eyes, a miniature version of what goes on in the company's plant where a hundred million pounds of man-made rubber are produced every year. Catch, please. Thank you. From the test tubes of the chemist come a thousand and one new substances never before seen in nature. Fabrics from coal, wood, glass, and versatile nylon. The lady with a nylon bonnet intrigues and mystifies Johnny, but he isn't the first man to be baffled by feminine headgear. Here's an attentive audience, and small wonder, this lady of the soap suds has been taking a bubble bath every 15 minutes since the exhibition opened. Yeah. 
Of great interest to Canadians are the foreign exhibits such as those of France and Sweden. On hand for the opening of the French exhibit is Ambassador Count Oatkluck. One of the many European nations that is getting on its feet after the war, France is hard at work rebuilding her export trade. The display of subtle perfumes and fine china reflects the characteristic genius of French artistry. Alongside the colorful exhibits of the Commonwealth nations of Great Britain, New Zealand, South Africa and Australia, I represented the two brand new dominions of India and Pakistan. They bring the treasures of one of the oldest civilizations to one of the newest. Here, Johnny sees the riches of the Orient. Silks from Kashmir and Bengal, pearls from Madras, woolen shawls from the Punjab, and pottery from Hyderabad and Karachi. Even the horses seem to know it's a special occasion. In farm and field, Canadian stock breeders have been preparing for this day. The competition is keen, and each year brings a higher standard of entries. In the world's largest exhibition building, the exhibitors vie for $125,000 in prizes. This youngster's a five-day-old Shetland, was born right here at the X, 24 pounds, just under two feet tall. Although meat is still at a premium, there's plenty of sirloin on the hoof. Mabel here wouldn't be so unconcerned if she knew she was going to be on next week's menu. For a four-year-old boy, the heart of the exhibition is the Midway. It's a topsy-turvy world of spielers, chorus girls, thrills and chills. To Johnny, it's a ready-made paradise. Yak, yak, I'm any face. How's this for position? Down at the waterfront, there's no marathon swim today, but look at those sea fleas churn up Lake Ontario. Being a true fan, he takes in the ball game, but he didn't expect to meet the world's heavyweight champion boxer, Joe Lewis. What a day. Outside the automotive building, he meets another world champion, Canada's wonder girl of the ice rinks, Barbara Ann Scott. Oh, gee. But there's just so much excitement a fella can take. Maybe those screwballs Olsen and Johnson can give his spirits a lift, because Johnny's getting tired. No. Johnny's had no lunch, and he's beginning to wish he hadn't spent all his money on candy floss. Shows and celebrities are all right up to a point, but right now, he wants his mother. of the law. What a fine way to end a day at the fair. He hadn't planned on visiting this building. The X just got too big for Johnny and he had to give up. There's 350 acres of ground in Exhibition Park and Mom and Pop have covered every single one looking for that Johnny. For him, the day has ended in disaster and his parents hadn't taken in half the things they'd planned to see. They've looked everywhere, everywhere but one place. He's about so high. soon forgiven. Before the fireworks has ended, Johnny is dreaming of taking Mom and Pop to the Canadian National Exhibition next year. For who knows the X better than Johnny? Johnny!